hello um this sew along we'll be doing the naomi bag by shambhala bags another fantastic free design that sam is kindly given so if you go to her files in her group uh, you should find it there um so yeah fantastic design i've already made one because i tested it for her and here's my test results um, so you see what you're going to be getting. Um, so it's a lovely design and it's got a lovely feature on the front of this um, gathering, I suppose you could call it. It just makes it curve out, which is really nice. You can put grommets in here to put um, a chain, bag chain through. But when I made it, before I put the grommets in, I, I didn't want to put a hole in it. <laughs> And I like it as it is. I thought it makes just a nice clutch bag to hold. Um, so I didn't want to put a chain, <clears throat> excuse me, on mine. Um, but you can add a grommet if you want to. Um, or you can do other things like putting side connectors on um, to put the chain on there and so on. I shall have to do a, a video about connectors, etc. Um, for you all to see at some point. But yeah, so that's the, my results for my test bag. And when I did it, I was so pleased with it. I thought, I need to do this for the group because you're all going to love it too. Nice, easy stitch out. So, <clears throat> what do we need? Um, we've got various parts to the bag. As I'm throwing everything around. Um, now this this bag I made was with vinyl on here as well. It's all completely vinyl apart from the inside which is fabric. Otherwise everything's made with vinyl. But I wanted to change the next bag so I'm going to use uh, cotton for the front. And what I've done is I've done two layers of interfacing just to give it a bit more body. Um, and you do that with uh, this piece. I've also marked all the little notches on the back because they're going to come into play. And then you've got the extra piece that you cut out of foam or fleece. I strongly suggest you don't use foam. I think it'll be too thick. So I used fleece on that bag and it's perfect. So I've used fusible fleece and you, you cut out the, play, the, the piece, which is a lot smaller than the bag, which you'll see why, and then just fuse that into place. Um, so there's those parts and you've also got side connectors which are these which I've done in vinyl here and you've also got a piece to cut out the fusible fleece. Um, now I've learned with this vinyl it doesn't like heat in, in what's, whatsoever. This is, um, it's got some foam on the back. This is the vinyl that's used a lot for bows. I mean, this vinyl uh, came from uh, Double H vinyl. Um, it's beautiful vinyl and the prices are great, but um, you can't iron it, so don't iron it. And you can't glue it, which I found to my cost when I did glue my original piece that I cut out here. And the glue, it sort of burns it. Can you see the line? Wherever you put the glue, that's what happens. So I had to dispose of the whole piece. I'll show you here actually. Um, if you can see, you see where it burnt it, just where I put the glue around the outside edge to glue the fusible fleece on, because I knew I couldn't iron it. So I learnt to my cost on that piece. So I had to cut out a fresh piece. And to be honest with you, this has got like a fleece on the back anyway, and I thought, I don't really need to to add anything to it. I have tried it with Elmer's Purple Glue and I tried a piece with that but it never dried. It just sat there and it didn't dry at all. So forget gluing this type of vinyl. You can glue the, the type of vinyl that I've used here but even so it has caused some marking. So you've got to be careful when you're gluing vinyl. Um, so I'm not going to fuse these pieces on because I can't iron them on but because of the fact that it has got the, the fleece on the back I don't think I will need to um, so we can forget those parts for me 
but if you're using a fabric or a thin vinyl that needs it like I did with these then do add the fleece onto the back I've already shown you this is my exterior back panel piece again I'm not going to be adding any vinyl any fleece but it doesn't call for it anyway so you don't need to add it on the back I didn't add it onto the back here and it's it's fine so um, you also need the two lining pieces which I'm doing to match the exterior piece and the oh and also in the woven interfacing sorry I've already woven my interfacing on I use Shapeflex SF 101 by Pellen that's my favourite one there is Villeen G700 which I believe is very similar um, but yeah, so I fuse my interfacing onto these parts this is my zip pocket piece um, the only thing I haven't cut out so far is my zipper facing, which I shall do shortly. And then we've got the uh, panel flaps, or flat panel, shall I say. You need to cut two. Um, and I've done this in another one from Double H Vinyl. Um, and again, this is it's beautiful. It's the matte, metallic matte vinyl. And I do adore this vinyl. But again, it can't be glued. Normally, I would glue the flat pieces together um, and then sew, but I can't do that. But you, you don't really need to. It doesn't call for gluing it all the way over, but can't use heat and bond light or anything like that because I can't iron it. So this is my choice to use this fabric. So if you don't want to have a fabric where you can't use glue, then obviously use something else. But I adore this vinyl, so I wanted to make a bag with it. So what the heck, I've done it. <laughs> so all I need to do now is get the zip and the zipper facing piece that I want to cut out, uh, which I'm going to do in the gold, I think. I'll have a think, I'll have a see. And we'll come back with the start of the bag. This is my zipper hack when you don't have matching zips for your fabric or you just want to hide the zip for aesthetic reasons. So what you need is your zipper facing. Um, my zipper hole as such and my zip is six inches on this occasion. So I've done a seven inch along and one and a half inches deep. Um, and then what you do is you draw a box half an inch up and you do it six inches long so you're leaving half an inch either end do the same on the other side and then cut out the rectangle um, you're basically cutting a rectangle that's six inch by half inch so you've got your zipper facing I've got my zip um, which I'm using off a continuous zip because I like to add my own zippers I've cut the V but I always cut the one side slightly lower than the other side and I'll show you why. I'm just going to run a flame across the edge of the zipper to give it a firmness and stop it, stop it fraying. And then we've got my zip pull and you just slide it on the higher side first. And then once you've got it down, you come to the shorter side and you add that onto, you hook the teeth onto the inside of that. I need to lay it down because it's easier for me to do laying down. Oh, it's come out. <laughs> so. And there you have it. Now. Had I done the V higher up, once you hook it on, you'd have ended up with a wonky zip with it being out of line, whereas this one is in line. So it's as easy as that to put a zip on. You don't need that fork method. I, I've never worked that out because my forks are wider than, than average, I think, so they never seem to work very well. Um, I can straighten that off now. And seal the ends. I just want to seal the ends of this one as well to stop that fray. So we've got the zip ready and as you can see on my fabric it just it's a bit bright for the fabric I've got. So we come to our hiding technique. 
I've got two strips of fabric here that match the outer, uh, the, the lining fabric. Uh, you can use any fabric you like. Uh, if you want to use a contrasting fabric, that's fine. Whatever you choose to do. And it only needs to be an inch wide um, or deep, as you might say. I've done an inch and a half because that's the fabric. I had the strips cut. So, I mean, they are an inch and a half wide. Um, just gives you a bit more room to play with. And it doesn't matter how long they are, so long as they're as long as the zip not the zipper facing um so in this case these are 10 inches long they don't need to be eight inches is the, is the minimum they should be uh, when you've got the six inch zipper facing um or seven inch sorry zipper facing but so you want it to be at least eight but as i say these were cut so i just did them i've lined them with interfacing just gives them a bit of a crisper edge and basically what we will be doing is giving you the end result that looks something like trying to get this all in and have the zipper hanging out so that you can see very fiddly that looks something like that <laughs> in a roundabout way um so anyway you'll see so uh the, as i say the first thing you need to do is cut the box out um, and literally you just, I've got half an inch up from the edge, a half an inch in, draw the line, stop half an inch at the end, turn over, do the same thing, then box the edges off and cut them out. Um, so that's the first thing you do. And then you've got your lining piece and patterns do vary. Some patterns tell you to do the zipper two inches down inch and a half down and so on um so for this purpose i'm going to do an inch down sorry an inch and a half down i beg your pardon um i believe the pattern i'm doing actually asks you to do that i'm not sure i just want to check because this is part of a pattern i'm doing um so i don't want to be getting it wrong no it doesn't say so i can do it i like <laughs> So I want to put double-sided tape on the zipper facing to stick it to the lining. So you put it on the outside edges, the long edges. take the tape off that's covering the sticky eventually <laughs> and then you want to get it central so I've got an 11 inch, 11 inch width on, on my piece of fabric. The zip 7 inches, so clearly it needs to be 2 inches either side. So, that's nicely stuck down and it's 2 inches either side. Um, because when we fold over, this is going to how it's going to look. Um, so, you know, I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to put it an inch away because it looks a bit, looks a bit low to me because of the height of the lining as such, the depth of the bag or whatever. <laughs> so that's the beauty of double-sided tape. You can reposition, which I've done. So I'm doing that an inch down because even folded over on the seam, it's still going to be like that. So that's what I'm doing for this one. So now what I need to do is stitch all the way around the outer edge. So 
So there we have it stitched all the way around the outside. And now what we need to do is cut the fabric from the middle. So just trim, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the edge. You don't want to cut too close because if you cut really close, there's a danger that the fabric could fray a little and then pull out of the, seat, the stitching. So if you leave a, you know, about a quarter to an eighth of an inch allowance, then that will stop that from happening. It's not going to be seen when the zip's finished, so it won't matter. So that's where we've cut the fabric from and now we want to attach the zip. So get our trusty double sided tape again. Sorry, I've just realised that's out of shot. I was only adding the tape though, so you haven't missed anything. <laughs> it's because I zoomed in a little bit, so I forgot about that. Okay, so the double-sided tape is on, and now we need to get our uh, strips of fabric. And what I like to do is use my cutting board to line up so that the, there's a line going along the middle to, to use that as a guide. And so I lay the strip down as straight as possible you really don't want it to be wonky and then I'm going to use the other strip to meet in the middle and then if you turn around you can see that it's nice and neat and then now we need the Um, double sided tape again and I'm going along in the middle of the strip I'll show you in a second when I've done it before I take the tape off for some reason this fabric does not want to stay flat it's quite frustrating <laughs> right so rather than the edge, which you don't can't mustn't do that, put the tape at like halfway up or halfway in, should I say? Um, because if you do it along the edge, there's it. Well, it won't work. Don't don't do it along the edge <laughs> um, because you're not stitching there. So uh, take the tape backing off. And then you want to line the zip up and make sure the tool's going to be the right way. And I think it's going to be best to do it this way. Just poke open the hole a little bit so you can see what you're doing. You need three hands for this really, because everything's sticking to each other. <laughs> So you want to do it so that the edge of one piece of tape, uh, fabric, is going along the centre of the zip, the teeth. 
So that's what I'm doing to line it up. move the zipper, zipper pull in so that you've got it inside the right place because you don't want to stitch it wrong and just tidy everything up along the back to make sure everything's caught in place. So, if I turn over, yeah, I've got it all in place. So that's how it's going to look when it's completed. So now what we need to do, before we do anything else, is add the zipper pocket onto the back. I just need to take a drink of water because I'm very dry. Okay, so make sure you've got the pocket the right way up and it's 22 centimetres across and 24 centimetres long and just put, I don't know what we do with that double sided tape, I don't know what I'll do, um, <laughs> I very rarely use pins nowadays, so a bit more double sided tape. Eventually it will come off. This is what I could do with my granddaughter because she's got tiny nails and she can pull this straight off. Right, now turn the zip, uh, zipper pocket facing down and lay it along the edge, making sure you've got it lined up centrally, as centrally as you can. And we just want to stitch along this part now. That's the only part we're going to stitch first. And then once you stitch the bottom, turn it over, bring the fabric down, Double sided tape again. <laughs> and then bring the fabric up and stick along. And now we stitch up there along and down. So I finished stitching all the way around. And that's how we do the concealed zip. And it works perfectly fine, but you can't see the bright red anymore. Um, and there you go. All we have to do now is stitch either side of the pocket and the pocket is finished. So I hope you like that little tutorial on my zip. For the first part of the sew along we need to prepare the uh, contrast accent pieces that will be the side pieces of the side pieces of the bag. So you have to cut them out on mirror mirror image. So you cut one like that and then turn it over and cut the other one out. And then you need to do a margin. And the best way to do the margin, um, I'm just lining up the parts, make sure I've got the right part, is the, it's not an exact measurement like a three eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch or anything. So the best, what I did found best was to just mark with a dot where the line is and just keep moving along sort of every centimetre or so, just mark it.
and as you're getting towards the end you then got to think that you, you need to mark where the end piece the end dot will be and carry on marking till you reach the part that you've marked And then it's just like dot to dot. Just join the dots along. Like so. And then because it curves, you need to snip along near to the a few millimetres away from the line and this will allow for the piece of material to uh, bend and curve neatly without any um, like definite bulges on the thing where you can see where it's folded rather than curved um, So, just snip along neatly. And then you get your double sided tape. Get it off that end. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Sometimes it just doesn't want to come off. Got it. Right, and then you just fold at the line. And just keep going. And you'll find that as you're going, some of the pieces will automatically overlap. And that's because you've done the cuts and that allows for a nice curve in the material. So as you can see on this piece, you'll see that they're overlapping in quite a few places. And there's a nice neat curve and that's where I had it on on this bag just a nice neat curve and you do the same with the other one and that's the pieces ready to work with so both pieces are prepared and at this stage this is when you'd add your fleece to the back and you'd have your fleece accent piece and that's the other way around <laughs> and you put it along there but as I already showed you I can't because of the type of vinyl I'm using but it is fleece backed anyway so I don't need to worry about that and we now have our uh, main panel piece I'm just looking for the, the, yeah, the exterior main panel piece I'll just get my ironing pad and we need to fuse the fleece part onto it fairly centrally. So there's the piece attached and I want to mark the notches on the piece for where the 
the side pieces will be sitting, will, will be attached. So I'm just looking for my uh, dark pen that dis is disappearing ink pen because I don't want to use my uh, marker pen because they don't iron off. And I've very, very carefully cut little tiny lines in the notches. I don't know if you can see that or not, but very, very faintly so that I can literally mark them like so. Last one didn't mark. Okay, so. I've marked the notches, I don't think you'll see them on the camera, but I've marked the notches for where we're going to be adding these pieces. But the first thing we need to do now is, um, we need to make the pleats um, on the piece. And you've got the markers here that are marked one, two, one, two. Basically you're going to bring one over to two. So you just need to fold that over initially to there and then pinch it back. So fold them onto each other so that you've got the two lines against each other. Then fold it back on itself and add a clip. And do the same on the bottom. So you're folding them in and then back on itself. And you don't want them, I'll show you what you don't want to do on this side. You don't want it to go like that and then like that because it's not going to be a, a correct pleat. You need it to be nice and neat and tucked just behind like that and that's when you know you've got it correctly pieced placed shall I say another clip and then the final piece like so and we just need to baste them now uh, an eighth of an inch seam allowance just quickly base down each side to put them in place so there we have the piece all stitched well I should have pointed out to you as well that these the folded parts go up at the back so now what we need to do um, is add the accent pieces and I'm going to put some double sided tape my best friend this would be my desert island take with me my sewing machine fabric double sided tape <laughs> oh and thread but yeah okay Take the backing off the tape and then you need to find the notches that you marked. So you put the first part next to the top notch and then find the bottom one and place that. So 
Same on the other side. And now we'll stitch down both parts. So there we have it with the side pieces stitched on. So now we need to mark for the magnetic snap. So I'm going to get my marker pen because it shows up the most. And Now I'm not using magnetic snap. I'm using a turn lock. Well, it's a, a lock of sorts. It doesn't it just folds down, doesn't twist or anything. So, um, so whatever you're putting on, um, this is where you mark it. So I've done the center marking. And I just want to check. I can't remember now if that right. So right, I've marked where I need to cut. Now, because this is so bulky. Um, it's going to be awkward to sew the two pieces together. So I'm setting this up and getting it ready to put the lock on. But I'm not going to put it on just yet. So I just want to check that it's going to go in and through quite happily. Yeah, so that's ready to go. If you were putting a magnetic snap on, you could do that part now because it's not going to get in the way at all. Um, but it will with this. So we put that to the side for now because we've done that part. And now we've got to get the flap ready. Now, when I use other products, I do glue the pieces together because it makes it easier when it comes to just sewing them. But I can't glue this at all in any way whatsoever. So I'm going to, I don't want to use clips either because the clips will mark the edge of the vinyl. Uh, so I'm just going to do it freehand as it is and do my best not to move it. Um, so hopefully it will stay together so I'm going to stitch now it does stay to, stay to stitch across there as well but when you add it onto the back um, you've got to stitch across again and if you're not precise with your stitching you could end up with a double line or a messy line so I'm going to stitch all the way around but not along the top um, so I, I suggest you do that as well. Don't sew along the top and we'll do that shortly. Okay, so once you've stitched round and you're happy. Now what I've done is there are a few places I just wanted to trim to even up where it was slightly you know, uneven in places where the underside was showing through etc. Now, as you can see with mine, there's a white edge, which I don't want to show up. So I get my Sharpie permanent marker or fabric pen. And I very carefully, because I don't want to colour on the page, it's on the piece of paper itself. Uh, sorry, the piece of fabric. Is I very carefully, and as you can see, I did it yesterday with my other one. Because um, you get permanent marks on your fingers. I just go round with a matching colour and as before it's textile colour 
mine is colourless, it's white but it dries clear um, and it's for painting um, leather or synthetic fabrics and it just seals them and stops them being fluffy um, I don't normally worry too much because it doesn't stain so I don't worry if I get it over the edges but this vinyl I've got a feeling would leave would mark if I went over the edges so I'm doing it very carefully I don't know if you can see it or not can you see it? not quite it does make it hard to do some things when I'm filming so that's that and I don't know what I did with my tissue paper that I had for wiping it. Oh, there. And then if you have got any little bits over, just wipe away from the edge. And make sure you use a clean piece every time. And then I don't think there's any on this side. I shall very carefully paint this when it's stitched to the vinyl, very carefully. Okay, now it's the part of putting the flap onto the back panel piece. Back, back panel piece. <laughs> so you need to mark two inches down. And put my ruler the wrong way. Just checking which side I want. I think I'm going to go with that way. So, want to put a bit a double sided sticky tape. And because this vinyl does mark and I know I wouldn't be able to get markings off, instead of doing two inches um, down, I'm going to do one line below. So it's sort of an inch and seven eighths along. And I'm just going to do a couple of little marks to let me know where I just need to go past. Oh, and I forgot, I've got to mark the halfway point, the, sorry, the edge point. So, there we have it, and... I just want to check that I've got it evenly placed. Four and three quarter. Four and three quarter. It just doesn't seem to be sitting as flat as it should be. That's better. It was just, just looking a little bit bubbled, so I wasn't sure it was sitting completely. Four and a half plus two. Four and a half plus two. So now we've got it even. And we just need to stitch along there. 
and there we've stitched along and if you want to at this point you can add rivets which I do want to do at this point so there we have uh, the back piece ready um, and you can at this stage if you wanted to add your twist lock piece other piece but I'm going to put this together now before I do anything else um, so you want to put the two main panels outer panels together to get ready to stitch them round so we have the panels together and you're going to stitch round all the way around a quarter of an inch seam allowance the panels are stitched together and we just need to snip the corners well they're not really corners but <laughs> the curves of the corners um, so that when we turn them the right way out they won't bunch and cause a problem So that's that and I'm going to turn it the right way out and this is where I'm going to add the um, lock make sure you really push the edges out and then I've got to find the lock piece which I've put, put aside and I don't know where I'll put it now that's clever of me um, so the lock's attached now on the front and in a little while we'll add this part will do shortly. Now we have our zip pocket uh, side done. We add the other side of the lining, right sides together, and then we need to sew around. But instead of doing uh, a quarter of an inch all the way around, we start at quarter of an inch to about an inch down and then spread out to three eighths of an inch all the way around we have to leave the gap um, the instructions say five inch but I leave about seven just to make it easier when I've used vinyl um, but if you've used fabric you can use a smaller gap so that's what I'll do stitch all the way around and then I shall come back and show you the gap so now that we've sewn our lining and we've left our nice large gap that make it easier for turning I'm going to add the other side of the lock um, and it's going to be quite straightforward to add I know there's probably some of you out there that don't like the thought of cutting into their um, beautiful bag that they've made that you've made um, and yeah, I admit even, I get a bit nervous every now and then. I think, ooh, <laughs> I've got to, uh, so it's quite stuck together. Oh, it's a bit, bit 
tight it seemed to be uh, stuck together right now what I like to do um, is get my chalk pen and I just like to mark where the screws go in and the hole but just mark around with the edge of the hole and then I just want to eye up where I want to put this I think that looks comfortable and then press down and I'm left with the mark there that I've made and I just want to bring it over and check that it's going to meet yes it will so that's the correct place for it because um, it can be hard to measure exactly um, but because I, I've got the the angle of the curve it gives me a good idea of where it's going to go over and yeah that's that's going to be more or less exact now, there's a few ways you can go ahead with doing this you can either use a craft knife to carefully cut but if you're a bit nervous about you know using a craft knife straight off the bat um what i sometimes do is start by creating a hole and then once I've created the hole I just carefully cut So I've cut the hole out and then I want to cut the hole for the screws so I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller for the hole I've wiped off the marks now but I know really where they're going to be And you just press down to get the bag edges tucked away. And if you need to slip a bit more, you can. It's always the best, best to go in gently to start with though. Um, and just expand the hole a little bit rather than making too big a hole and then having a problem. You do have to really do your best to press down because you don't want to make the hole too big so that it's loose. 
so you do find that you do have to press down and now I can't find my there <laughs> Just going to trim there. And then get the screws. And I never screw fully in. I always screw a little bit and then add the other one. Um because screwing it in tightly on one side can actually shift it a little bit out of the way which makes it harder to do and then I pick it up at this point press between my fingers if you want to glue it you can but I don't like to because sometimes the glue seeps out and you've got a horrible mess and it's ruined so you take your chances if you glue so that's the uh, lock part added and then we just check and that's it done so it's quite simple it's a little bit fiddly and now we want to add the two pieces together and you want to make sure that your zip pocket is going to be at the back make sure the flap is down inside the bag and that's nice because the hole's big enough the flap can hang down below as well which makes it easier to fit in and then as I always do, I start with lining up the seams so that they match. It's a bit fiddly. And I'll put a clip and then I match up the other end. Oh, this vinyl likes to stick to itself. <laughs> but it's worth it because it's gorgeous. And another clip. Now on this side, it looks like it's going to fit beautifully. And on this side, it always looks like there's more than there, there needs to be, but there isn't. It, it will fit nicely and evenly. Um, when I did my first bag, I thought, oh, this really doesn't look like it's going to fit properly. It looks like there's too much vinyl compared to the lining, but it turned out to be perfect. So it, it's an optical illusion. So you clip all the way round and then you do a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the top and stitch around. Beg your pardon, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I just checked because I thought that doesn't sound right. So it's three eighths of a seam allowance. So once you've stitched all the way around, just trim the seam allowance down to quarter of an inch so it's not so bulky around the top edge. Oh, that 
seems a bit tight. <laughs> so I just turned to cut away so I didn't cut into the wrong place. That would have been a disaster. So I've trimmed around the seams and now we just want to pull the bag through, which because I've left such a large hole will be nice and easy. edges out and then what I like to do is get my iron and I just like to press the seam so it makes it easier to stitch when we're closing the seam off do both sides um, and then I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape to seal that part um, so it stays put when we're uh, I'm sewing it closed I was just going to turn it over to press them, but I press on this side because of the vinyl. Okay, I closed the seam with the double sided tape and then I stitched it closed. And then you just poke the lining into the bag. Make sure you poke it into the corners. Both sides. So it sits in there nice and neatly. And then you roll the hem slightly over so that it's not showing on the outside. So you roll it slightly over and then stitch around the top at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not going to film doing that bit because it's quite fiddly and I'm so worried when I'm filming that I'm not getting it right that I, I take my eye off the sewing. So I need to focus and concentrate on it. I shall be back when I've top stitched. So I've top stitched all the way around the edge and on the inside you can see it. And here we have the wonderful, beautiful Naomi clutch. Now, you can at this point add grommets, which you would add there. I'm not adding grommets because I don't want a handle on my bag or strap. I want it to be a plain, simple clutch bag. Um, there are videos out there on YouTube for adding grommets. I do plan to do a tutorial for that. Um, so I'm sorry I'm not doing it for this bag but I don't want to add them onto this bag um, so that's my clutch bag completed and I'm very happy with her um, and there we go I hope you enjoyed the tutorial any questions please ask in the group or message me direct happy stitching <laughs>